Hey, this is Joe with Personas. Let's talk about fixing timing issues with audio recordings. When you record MIDI, the note information gets recorded, and then you can use tools like Quantize to either snap that note perfectly to the grid, make it perfectly in time, or get it closer to the grid, but not all the way. Those options are available to you in MIDI. Similar options are available to you in audio, but it's just a different process. So um, here's an example of a guitar part that I intentionally played out of time with a drum loop uh, for demonstration purposes. So here it is. So you can see I get progressively more off the beat. You can even see it here like this downbeat should be happening on this line, but it's happening early. I'm, I'm ahead of the beat, which is pretty common. Uh, pretty common for musicians to get ahead of the drum beat. They want to speed things up a lot of times. So generally speaking, the, the big disclaimer up front is the best solution to this particular problem is practice, right? Have the musician practice to a metronome or a drum loop and get better at keeping in time. That said, if you record a five-minute song, there may be a few sections of a couple bars where uh, you get a little ahead of the beat and then you settle back into the groove and you can either re-record those or there are some tools we can use in Studio One to fix those spots. Um, now, whether you are against, adamantly against fixing anything, if that's you, um, have a nice day. This isn't for you, but for the rest of us who don't mind, sorry, who don't mind uh, using the technology available to us to uh, improve upon what we've done, i.e. fix this timing, uh, here's how I would go about doing that. So there are three ways I want to talk about. The first way is probably the way I do the most, which is to manually edit it and use the slip edit feature to move things around. So let's just take this first section here. Let's listen again. So I'm consistently ahead of the beat. So just visually, we can look and see that this is ahead of the beat. This is ahead by about the same amount. And then it starts to get worse as we go over here. So I feel like this one is even more ahead of the beat than the others. So what I'm gonna do is take these first kind of two measures and I'm gonna hold down, I'm gonna switch my, I'm gonna press one on my keyboard to make sure that I've switched to, whoops, to where this is my secondary tool, the split tool, so I can, when I hold, whoops, when I hold down command, it turns into the split tool. And I'm gonna turn off the snap to grid feature, which you can do by just pressing the N on the keyboard. Not sure why, but I've memorized that at this point. So I'm gonna cut it right here, because I'm gonna mess with this part later. We're gonna focus on just this section here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down command and option, control option on the PC. I'm gonna drag that rhythm. I'm looking right here at this little peak. I'm gonna drag that until it's about in line. And what you notice is this one's in line, but then this one is also pretty close. And this little spike here, each of these little blobs should be lined up with one of the vertical lines, which is marking the tempo. Uh, by the way, if you don't have lines marking the tempo, it's probably because your time base isn't set to bars. If it's set to seconds, then all your vertical lines are seconds, and that is useless in this analogy. Um, when it is set to bars, then the lines correspond to whatever tempo you have set down at the bottom. Okay, so what, moving that over, I actually got all of these, they look like they're a lot more in place. Once I do that, I press X to make sure there's a crossfade on the front and the end, and then of course, I listen. Here it was before. You hear how the guitar got ahead of the beat and it really does kind of just, it messes up the whole deal. And then after, might be still a little bit ahead. You could even go a little bit after if you wanted to so that like the drum loop is the initiator of the beat and the guitar comes behind. Totally different feel. And it's just a simple, you know, dumb drum loop, but that feels so much better. So that's the first way is we come in and just manually move it. What I've noticed with my playing and other people's playing is if they get off track, if they get back on track, they typically are off for a measure or two. And typically just a big sweeping move like this is enough to get them back. So like this, I was consistently ahead of the beat for two measures. Um, and then Actually, I continued to get worse because I was trying to make a point. But um, in kind of one and two measure sections at a time, you can typically just take the whole thing and move it, and it feels better, rather than going in and 
moving every single individual beat. That starts to, you start to feel like, that, that starts to sound wonky and doesn't really work very, very well. Okay, so that's the first approach, manually doing a slip edit. So we've done nothing but just cutting audio and moving it around, like physically moving it around. Okay, let's take that same piece of audio and put it back in its out of time position. And let's try a different approach. So the second approach is to use bend markers. If you look up here in the top menu, there's a mode here called audio bend. When we click that, a, a, a separate menu pops up here. And we can set this to analyze what's happening and to create what we call bend markers. So if I say analyze, you'll see that it created these vertical lines. It's basically looking at the audio and guessing as to where the transients are. And we can kind of play with that even more by adjusting this threshold to be either more or less sensitive. And if there's, if it's missing a bunch, we can change the detection type and call it sensitive, and then it goes and finds more spots. Standard for stuff like this, for me, tends to work pretty well. Um, so if I move this up to about here, Right there, it seems to be catching most, if not all, of the parts that I would want to adjust. That looks about right. And so what does this mean? Well, right now, nothing has happened. The audio is still out of time. But now we can use this bend tool, which is up in our toolbar, and we can actually come in here and grab these bend markers and move them. So we're actually physically moving the audio, and what's happening is it's literally stretching and compressing the timing of the audio. It's using like fun like algorithms to go in and stretch the audio to make it where it needs to be. Um, if you get a spot that has two next to each other, if you see a big bright red color, it means it's probably stretched too much. That typically I just double click and it gets rid of the extra marker and then we can kind of move things around. So what's the benefit of this approach? It's a little more specific and it's since it's speeding up and slowing down everything in the audio file, you don't you're not missing any samples. It's it's the same thing you recorded, you just tightened it up or stretched it out, but all the audio is there. Um, and sometimes that can be make for a better sound sometimes. So let's listen to that. So you can hear I all the ones I adjusted sounded good. These last couple here were wonky because I didn't fix those. Now that those are fixed, let's listen. This is especially good if you've got, it's not consistently out of time. Like this one, I showed you I could move the whole thing and it fixed itself. But if it was worse where the first, the first note is ahead of the beat, the second note is behind the beat, and you really have to be more surgical, this might be a quicker way to do that. Um, so now this leads me to my third way of approaching this, which is to, let's just undo all this for a second, is to use... We still use the bend markers, but we just have it adjust everything for us. The way I normally do that, I don't even pull up this bend marker view. Like, I don't even have that here. I just select the audio that I want to adjust, and I press Q on the keyboard. On the keyboard. Q on the keyboard. And it does its thing. Actually, no, it didn't. I, I lied. It usually does. Maybe because I've already selected it, it's, it's being weird. So I come in here, I analyze it, and then I just click Apply over here. And so what it's doing is it is quantizing with 100% strength those markers that it's detected. So it did basically the same thing I just did manually, but now it's done it to the entire selected audio. So I don't have to go drag each one individually. It's already done it. It's a good idea to go through and listen because occasionally it gets it wrong and you have some weird ar artifacts. So you want to hear that first. Like that was a weird thing here. Probably because these two bend markers were close together. So we just switch to our bend tool, we get rid of one, and that should sound better. So this is a this is a tool I don't use as much, mainly because I just like the first method where I'm going in and manually doing it. But if I'm in a pinch where I've got a whole lot of editing, the drummer is just not in time, but this thing's due tomorrow and I have five songs to edit, then I'm gonna use this mode. And it can work really well. So like I can take this whole piece of audio and I can just go bam and it automatically goes in and adjusts everything. Then all I have to do is listen to make sure it did a good job. And in spots like this where it looks like it probably messed it up, right, it, it made a mistake. It's okay, it makes mistakes. You just come in and double click on those and get rid of the extraneous extra bend markers and then things tend to work just fine. 
So there's spots where since it is all done kind of, it's not technically AI, but it's in that vein, right? It's it's man, it's trying to use algorithms to determine musical intent, and it's pretty good about it, especially on things like drums. With guitar, sometimes you have to massage it a little bit to get things in the right place. But even that is as simple as just dragging things around or double-clicking on them to make them go away. That's pretty incredible because this last section of this guitar part was terrible because I played it so out of time. And like right here, you'll notice this is really the downbeat. And for some reason, it thought this was it. So I'm going to select here to make another marker, and then I'm going to remove these. Now I can move this back and say, hey, Studio One, I just fixed your problem. And that initial downbeat is going to sound a lot better. Unreal. And here's what happens. If you need to not see those anymore, just come click this uh, this little eyeball here, and it takes the bend markers away. Um, and if you're unhappy with that, you can just revert back to the original. So if I click on default here, it goes back, I believe, to its default mode. Oh, no, restore, sorry. Hit restore, and it restores the timing, so shift Q as well. So here's what it sounds like with it fixed. which is delightful, and then if I undo that, this is how bad it was before. <laughs> that is remarkable. You know, it, it hurts my brain to hear how badly I played that, um, but to see how we're able to, with just a, literally like, with just a couple clicks of the mouse and a couple presses on the keyboard, it fixes that and makes it sound really good like this, that's pretty amazing technology. I would have never known that that was not played that way the first time. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind. When it when it does a lot of stretching, there can be artifacts in the audio. That's just the nature of it. So it can only fix it if it's within a reasonable distance from where it needs to be. Um, secondly, this is doing a lot more processing to do this because it's stretching it in real time. So once you get it where you want it to be, Oh, I even used the wrong algorithm here for stretching. Probably should have used the pro format, but it still sounded good. Uh, once you get it where it needs to be, it's a good idea to just uh, kind of print this. So you can just use like Command B, and that will render that audio. So now it's not time stretching anymore. It's just we're just hearing the fixed audio. And there you go. Those are three ways to fix your mistakes when it comes to timing in Studio One. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.